Hello, and welcome to this presentation. In this workshop, we will cover the high school graduation and A through G university and college admission requirements. This presentation is geared for incoming freshman students enrolled in Homestead High School for the 2021-22 academic school year. So next slide. And here, um, as we get settled in, I will begin by introducing myself. My name is Mayra Alvor, and I am a counseling intern at Homestead High School for this 2021 summer session. So far, I am loving it and enjoy being here each day. For our agenda, we will cover the next topics, which include background information about the high school and public school district. And we will also cover the various counseling and support services offered here at the school campus to all of the students and also dive into our high school graduation requirements and also cover the A through G university and college admission requirements. And in the end of the presentation, it will be opened up to the audience and I encourage all of the students to ask any questions that you might have. All right, so here we have a picture of our school campus and just a little background information about our high school. Our high school, Homestead High School, is part of the Fremont Union High School District. And this school district was founded back in 1925 in the heart of Silicon Valley. Fremont Union High School District is consistently recognized as one of the most respected and highest performing high school districts in the state of California. The other four comprehensive high schools that are part of this school district include Cupertino, Fremont, Limbrook and Monte Vista High School. Homestead High School serves students from Sunnyvale, Cupertino, and Los Altos. So we have students from several different cities here. Our school's mission statement is for people to prepare students to be critical thinkers, lifelong learners, and collaborators. All right. Now I will begin by introducing our counseling support services offered to students. And then this will be followed up by introducing the administration team. So we have a great team of counseling uh, guidance counselors. Um, and the, the guidance counselors offer a wide range of services to students. And this may include counseling in areas of academic achievement, career choices and or personal and social development. So I will begin by introducing our guidance counselors. Ms. Amesquita is a guidance counselor working, working with students with last name A through F. Fun fact about her, Target is her happy place. So if you have your name, your last name falls between A through F, make sure to reach out to her. Their emails are posted here on this slide and published and their phone number also. The second guidance counselor that we have here on campus is Ms. De Jesus, and she works with students last name G through L. Again, her contact information is there if you would like to request a meeting and schedule a meeting. And fun fact about her, she loves boba. Our third guidance counselor is Ms. Wu. She works with students L through S. Here's her email and her phone number. And a fun fact about her, she also loves the Warriors. We also have Mr. Chan, one of our guidance counselors. Unfortunately, we don't have a picture of him, but we will get one soon. And he works with students last name S through C. Again, his contact information is down there if you would like to reach out. So in addition to our great group of guidance counselors here to support students, our student support also includes a school-based therapist on campus. Her name is Ms. Lloyd and she is available to meet with students and offer mental health counseling services. So again, she offers more mental health counseling services and they're available to all students on a walk-in basis or by appointment. If you would like to schedule an appointment with her, the phone number is, post, is published here on this uh, website and um, her email also. And students may also be referred for services by any member of her staff, their peers or parents. And a fun fact about her, she doesn't, she's not a big fan of Boba like, her, like all, the, all the other guidance counselors. And we also count with the help of Ms. Salazar, who is our college and career specialist. She is your go-to person if you need help with college applications or personal statements. 
Fun fact about her, she loves crafting. Now we will go on to our Homestead High School administration team. So our admin consists of four admins here on campus. Our principal, Mr. Guglio, assistant principal, Mr. Dong, assistant principal, Mr. Wright, and assistant principal, Ms. Hannigan. So I'm pretty sure you will see them walking around campus and they're a great team to lead the school. Our admin team also extends to our deans, Mr. Newen and Ms. Trejo. All right. So now we will go on to the graduation requirements for Homestead High School. The goal is to graduate from Homestead High School in four years, and now we will review the requirements. So in order to graduate from high school, you need to complete a total of 220 credits. 220 credits are required to graduate from high school here at Homestead High School. So it's important to note that each course will allow you 10 credits. And each Homestead High School course is a year long course. So for example, you will take the same class one full year and you will receive five credits each semester. So again, five credits are earned per semester per class. And the total will be 10 credits per class each year. So five credits per semester, you take two semesters per school year, that is 10 credits per class each year. So 60 credits per year um, is what is possible here at Homestead High School. And if you wanna receive credit for your classes, you need to pass with a letter grade of a D or better. Now we will review the subjects and how many credits you need to complete in order to be eligible to receive your high school diploma. So for the English, for, for subjects, we have English, you need to complete 40 credits. So that means you will take English all four years and receive 10 credits each year. Science, you need 20 credits. And again, how many credits can you receive in one year? 10 for science. So if you, will, you have to take science at least two years. Social science, you need 30 credits. Math, you need 20 credits. Physical education, you also need 20 credits. World language, you need 10 credits. For fine arts, you are required to complete 10 credits. And for applied arts, you need 10 credits. And for electives, oops, you need, um, you need 60 credits. That's a lot of credits. So your total credits required is 220. Here in this slide, we have an example of what your courses might look like for this school year for ninth grade. You're all incoming ninth grade students. And these are the classes you are going to have to enroll here at Homestead High School, your first school, your first year in high school. So you will enroll in literature writing, math course, biology, and physical education, also known here as PE9. An elective and an elective art or world language. And you also have an option of taking a seventh class. Um, and that is based on availability. So if space is available, you are welcome to take a seventh class, but it's not guaranteed that we might have that availability. And when I mentioned electives, I know you all notice that you need 60 credits of electives to graduate from high school. Here are some options. You will have to enroll in a world language, and that includes the following languages here that you can choose. French, Spanish, Japanese, and Chinese. And of course, we have several levels but um, you will have to decide what language you want to um, choose and learn here in high school. For applied academics, the electives that we offer are career technical education, programming and work experience. And we also have fine arts. So just a reminder, the CSU, the California State University requires two years minimum. And the University of California, the UCs, require two years minimum also, but they recommend you to complete three years. Some frequent questions that we get from students are, how many classes do I need each year? So students here at Homestead High School can take six classes per year. Students need a total of 220 credits to graduate. It is not necessary for a student to take seven classes each year to obtain 220 credits. The second question is, can I get credit for a class I am taking outside of Homestead High School? So the first thing to do is to discuss this with your guidance counselor. There are some classes that we will give credit to students to put on our high school Homestead transcript, but many are considered enrichment classes and will not go on the high school transcript. 
students can use this class that they completed outside of high school on their college applications. Um, a lot of students end up taking community college courses. Um, depending on what community college course um, you take, um, you might be eligible, eligible to um, put it on your transcript, but you might not. This is something that the guidance counselor will determine on a case-by-case -case basis. And um, if you do take an outside course, let's say at a local community college, that will look excellent on your college application because it will show the admission committee that you are able to handle the rigor of college courses. So now to the third question. I don't care for my teacher. Can I change my teacher? So here at Homestead High School, we do not do teacher switches. We recommend setting up a meeting yourself and your teacher to discuss the issues that you might have as a first step. Um, I always say that um, if you do a good job with completing assignments, participating, communicating with the teacher, you will always end up um, having, a, having a good experience in that class. All right, so now let's, type, let's talk about the type of classes. So for example, um, here at Homestead High School, we do offer college prep. And the subjects offer our English, math, social science, science, and electives. We also offer what is known as honors level classes and advanced placement classes, also known as AP. So honors level classes are more challenging because they have slightly, challenging, slightly more challenging exams, essays, and assignments. Um, there is a way GPA for a few classes. For AP courses, we have um, college level classes for junior and senior students. And then you're, you can take the optional AP exam. Depending on the score you receive, you might be eligible to get college credit for that AP course completed here in high school. And it is a way GPA. So if you're looking to attend a four year college, most likely you will end up taking honors and AP courses. All right, so now we will go on to the to review the post-secondary opportunity. So after Homestead High School, you are graduating. And then what is your next step? What do you want to do after high school? For a lot of students, the next step is attending a four-year college, a university or liberal arts, um, but it's a four-year college. And we have a lot of options here. You have a lot of options. If you want to go the public school route, then most likely you'll end up in California State University, the CSU campuses. Um, we have a lot of them. The, most, the closest one here is San Jose State, which is the school I'm currently attending for graduate school. We also have um, San Diego State down in Southern California here local in the Bay, San Francisco State and CSU East Bay. If you want to attend the University of California, the UC campuses, these are more research focused and tend to be a little bigger. Um, so here in the Bay Area, we have UC Berkeley, University of California at Berkeley. We also have um, University of California in D Davis over there by Sacramento. Um, if you want to go towards Southern California, we have more UC campuses such as University of California at San Diego. We also have UC Santa Barbara and UCLA. So those are more popular colleges um, that people like to, you know, maybe move out of the Bay Area and go to Southern California. If you decide to go to a private college, we have a lot of private colleges here in California and out of state. For example, the closest to us is Stanford University, which is a beautiful campus. And out of state colleges, yes, there's a lot of options. If you want to move, let's say to New York, Hawaii, there are options for you. All right, so as mentioned, a lot of options. So here in California, we see UC Berkeley, Fresno State, UCLA, Stanford, oh, so we're all the way over here. And yes, as I mentioned, so many options. So you have time to decide. Um, and now let's talk about what you need to do to, in order to get accepted to those four-year colleges. You need to complete the A through G university requirements. Now, my advice to you as someone who graduated high school and went to uh, completed undergrad is to complete your A through G university requirements. It does not matter if you aren't sure of what you wanna do after graduating from high school, but completing your A through G requirements you will have many more opportunities after you graduate from high school and you will have more options. So this is the way to go. Um, here in the A through G requirements, so for area A, you have to complete history and social science and you are required to complete two years of that. So two academic school years. For area B, we have English, so that's four years. So each school year you will be enrolled in English. For area C, you have the subject math 
and you have to complete three years. Um, please note that the University of California, the UCs recommend an additional year of math. So even though three years is required, the UCs require, recommend you to enroll all four years in math. And I would say do it if you can, because you will be more skilled in math. You will have more, you will be more prepared whatever college major you decide to go into. If you want to go into like um, engineering or any major that is heavy in math, then definitely take all four years. For area D, if you, or you have to complete two years of lab science, but as mentioned, the UCs require, sorry, recommend an additional year. So that would make it three years. For area E, world language, same language, you're required to complete two years, but the UCs recommend three years. And for area F, visual and performing arts, it's one year. And for area G, college prep elect this one year. So you might be asking, why are the UCs recommending an extra year if it's only required, like for example, for math, you only, it's only required three years, but the UCs are recommending an additional year. Well, that's because they receive a wide, um, excuse me, a lot of applicants and they're going to take the more competitive applicants. So my advice is if you have the opportunity, just take the additional um, um, year of the subject. That is my advice. And now keep, please note that the grades required for graduation here are a D minus or better. However, grades required for the A through G requirements is a C minus or better. So please aim to receive a C minus letter grade or better in, in all of these courses. And again, here is just um, information about the UC and California State University A through G admission requirements. So if you do plan to attend college, just know that you have to do more than just focus in your academics. You also, you also should be involved in school activities, be involved in community activities, and just keep track of your honors and awards that you receive throughout your four years of high school. And just make it a priority to be a well-rounded student. That way, when you apply to colleges, you will have experiences to talk about on your personal statement. They wanna to get to know you as a person. And here in high school, I mean, you are still growing. You are, you are making, you're going to make uh, memories. And I really recommend for you to be active on campus, join clubs. There's so many clubs here, join sports. Again, so many clubs and you make, make uh, memories, have fun, but always focus on your academics and join any leadership position. So it's great. It's, you have a lot of opportunities here. Now, if you don't decide to go to a four-year college, we also have what is, what is known as specialized schools, also known as trade schools. And these specialized schools um, can, um, have the advantage of you being able to enter the workforce in two years or less and earn a competitive salary. So pretty much is shorter than what your typical four-year college um, degree length. Um, and you're able to enter the workforce a little sooner. So a lot of these, um, this includes apprenticeships like construction, plumbing, uh, pharmacy technology, and culinary arts. So there's a lot of options if you want to pursue this route also. And third, we have the option of attending a community college after graduating from Homestead High School. Community colleges are very affordable. And with high um, tuition, um, tuitions, a lot of students option for community colleges. Here in the Bay Area, we have two great colleges. We have De Anza College and um, Foothill College, all great community colleges. And you're pretty much to enter community college. If you graduate from Homestead High School, you're set. You have your high school diploma. Um, it's a great um, way to save money. And um, if you want to just com complete your first two years, of your general ed requirements. A lot of these community, well, all of them have um, a, a transfer agreements with the public universities. So they have transfer agreements with the CSUs and UC. So pretty much if you complete all of the courses and you maintain a certain GPA, you're pretty much guaranteed admission. And the first, if you do decide to go to community college, the first thing you need to do is set up an appointment with the counselor your first semester. That way you have your, um, your, 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 you have all of your classes scheduled and ready to transfer. I know I threw a lot of information at all of you, but don't worry, you can relax. There's no need to be overwhelmed. You have so much time to digest and 
learn all of this information. I mean, you have four years to accomplish it. And um, just have fun in high school, stay focused, um, maintain a good balance and practice self-care. I think you will have a great time here at Homestead High School. This is a great high school and you have a lot of support. We are all here to help you. And as mentioned, we have a lot of on-campus resources. You have the admin team, account, uh, uh, guidance counselors, therapists, you have your teachers, peers, parents, and yes, if you want to make an appointment with your guidance counselor, um, you can go on this website. Well, please um, go on the Homestead High School website and then press the guidance and student support tab. It's that easy. And then when you're there, you're going to see the name of the counselors that I mentioned. So for example, for Ms. De Jesus, uh, simply press the appointment request uh, button that's in green. And then you will be able to schedule the appointment. And here are their office hours. So it's very easy to seek out a guidance counselor. I really recommend all of you to schedule an appointment as soon as possible, because that way, you, whatever questions you have, whatever questions your parents might have, this is a way to get them answered. So all of you should come in with um, the expectation that you're all going to graduate, not just graduate from high school, complete the A through G requirements and have so many options after high school. Um, if you get accepted to colleges, um, that's great. Um, so you'll have more options. Um, do you have any questions? All right, this will um, conclude the presentation. Any questions you might have, just um, feel free to ask. But um, if no one has a question, this will conclude the presentation. Thank you for attending.